The original 70 Cuda was a hot little honey when it came off the line. They still slay at auction. Mopar Madness has survived quite well over the years. Some people are quite happy with designs that come from the factory. For others, it's just the beginning. For Paul and his team, factory design is the point of departure. Morning. Good morning. Rear balance? Yeah, and the finish work of the rear balance. Um, when it comes to measurements, all cars are built off datum or reference points. Like we have a string down the middle of the car now, and we have a reference point from the bottom of the floor up so that we have an area to refer to every single time so that we can make sure that everything goes back to its right place. Reproduction metal is rarely a bolt-on fix. Holes and fittings can be slightly off from the ideal location. Some will tell you NOS or old leftover stock is the only way to build, but the reality is that metal didn't make it onto a car either, and there's probably a good reason for it, and at nearly double or triple the price, NOS may be best left on a shelf. Front balance from Goodmark was actually really good. We didn't have a lot of issues uh, with the fit up on the front balance. Um, we were lucky on that because as, every time we get to fitting parts onto a car as we get this far along, uh, an extra 10 or 15 or 20 hours where it doesn't need to be will hurt us on the other side. He's going for a more cleaned up look across the front and while it still uses the stock components, it'll be a little bit tighter looking, a little bit cleaner looking. We also uh, removed the license plate pocket on the bumper and filled that in. We're being allowed to flex our muscle and put our signature on this car. All cars that I build are like my children, and I have many of them out there. Um, everyone has its own inherent signature. So the things that we want to do are we want to be able to show what we can do here uh, and how well we can adhere to a concept or a drawing. Funny how renderings always omit door handles, mirrors, and plate holders. Guess it takes away from the smooth lines. You basically cut all the remaining metal you don't need out. You start with templating board and tape. You uh, get your initial shape and you find the radiuses you need and then you convert that to metal and you shape it and tack weld it all into place and then uh, shave it all down to where it looks smooth enough to where you can uh, bodywork it. Both the front and rear bumpers will be painted rather than return to a chrome finish, a direction modern designers have gone to for years. The car won't necessarily be a daily driver. It will be driven to shows, and I was concerned about removing the front license plate because in certain states it's required. But uh, Paul told me that he'd be able to fashion some kind of a bracket that we could clip onto the front to display the front license plate, but once you get to your final destination, it can easily be removed and stored in the trunk or whatever. Not having a front plate hole is nothing new. Ask any Corvette owner how they feel about them and you'll get a response that we probably cannot put on TV. Looking at the car now with all the sheet metal basically intact on it, it really starts to, it's starting to look like a car and I'm really getting excited about this. I can, I can envision what it's gonna be. The back end, I can't tell you how much I like the way the back looks with the bumper tucked up in tighter and the, the rear valance cleaned up. It looks so much nicer. It's, it's really gonna look good and uh, I, I just, I'm really thrilled about it, excited. 30 hours of labor just to get to this stage, you've got to appreciate the effort, even if you can't afford the bill.